We are digital citizens. Our actions, social interactions, our perception and understanding of the world are mediated by algorithms. Algorithms make decisions for us, support our choices and influence our behavior. Think about your last purchase. Recommendation and filtering systems provide e-commerce users with personalized content on the basis of their interests and tastes. Web search engines provide personalized results thanks to profiling algorithms. Algorithms are at the basis of our information society. For example, web service providers like Wikipedia wouldn't been able to process the amount of incoming data without the help of algorithms. In particular, Wikipedia relies on the Objective Revision Evaluation Service, where machine learning enables the automatic identification of misleading, biased, or inaccurate content. An algorithm's behavior is usually dependent on a set of parameters which are specified by developers and configured by users with desired outcome in mind. However, operation within reasonable parameters is not synonymous with ethically acceptable behavior. This is shown, for example, by profiling algorithms where AI-based recruiting systems might discriminate against women and minorities. Other forms of discriminations arise with the automatic delivery of online advertisement according to perceived ethnicity. Ethical problems are mainly a byproduct of data-driven algorithms, characterized by their capacity to learn from datasets constituting previously made decisions. When these autonomous decision-making machines are employed to trigger actions, the responsibility for potential failures becomes complicated to attribute. The resulting gap between operation of algorithms and our understanding of their potential and actual ethical impact can have severe consequences affecting whole segments of the society. We are going to answer two main questions. First, what kinds of ethical issues are raised by algorithms? Second, how do ethical issues apply to algorithms themselves, as opposed to technologies built upon them? Before delving into the ethical discussion, we have to agree on the definition of algorithm. The term algorithm assumes different meanings across computer science, mathematics, and public speaking. As a mathematical construct, an algorithm is a finite set of instructions accomplishing a given purpose under given provisions. However, our investigation will not be limited to this conceptual definition. To take actions and have effects, an algorithm must be implemented and executed. This means that from an ethical perspective, we cannot consider algorithms independently from the technology being used or the specific implementation. Our focus will be on a particular class of algorithms that augment or even replace human analysis and decision-making. These algorithms are ethically challenging for two different aspects that I personally term a priori and a posteriori. The a priori challenge is related to problem solving. Think about how machine learning employs data to build a predictive model challenging human capacities for logical complexity and number of variables. As a consequence, today machine learning outperforms humans' decision-making even in tasks previously performed by humans. A standout example are those algorithms employed in data analytics. Analytics is the discipline of making sense of big streams of data. It allows to identify relationships and non-obvious patterns across large and distributed datasets. Analytics algorithms work with high-dimensional data to determine which features are relevant to make specific decisions. The number of features taken into account can run into the tens of thousands, challenging humans for the scale of analysis and complexity of the decision-making process. The a posteriori challenge, instead, regards our capacity to understand 
why an algorithm came up with a specific answer. We are not asked to find a solution to a problem anymore, but just to explain, afterwards, why a particular decision was made. The opacity and uncertainty of machine learning rationale make these algorithms similar to black boxes. Our analysis about the ethics of algorithms will focus on seven types of concerns which are associated with the consequences of potential failures. Ethical concerns span three different dimensions – epistemic, normative, and moral. The first concern comes from the fact that correlation does not imply causation. For those who are not familiar with these terms, let's consider this funny scenario. This guy found that every time he wakes up with a headache, he's still also wearing his shoes. Of course, this correlation is not enough to state that sleeping with shoes causes headaches. Indeed, there must be an external factor, like, for instance, that the guy got drunk the night before, which is a common cause for both sleeping with shoes and having a headache. Why is this important for algorithms? By nature, inferential statistics and machine learning techniques will always be limited to the identification of correlations within the data. Nevertheless, when correlations are found on big volumes of data, they are often considered sufficiently credible to trigger actions without searching for causal links. Even though correlations in large datasets are not easily falsifiable, recognizing the limitations of the algorithms being used is important to understand the ethical implications behind their uncertainty. The second concern is related to the scrutability of evidence, which includes the accessibility and comprehensibility of the decision-making process. This form of transparency allows to control, monitor, and correct the execution of algorithms. Accessibility to the functioning of an algorithm is often intentionally kept secret for the sake of competitive advantage, security, or privacy. So, in some way, transparency runs counter ethical ideals. Besides being accessible, the real challenge is to understand the rationale of algorithms, which is sometimes obscured. For instance, interpreting how specific data points affect machine learning classification methods is often unclear. Such classifiers must go through a training process before being able to correctly separate new data points into the correct classes. During this training, the operational parameters of the model are configured while minimizing a cost function determining the adjustment on the decision logic. Once trained, the model can be fed with new unseen data points, which will be associated to the correct class with a certain probability. The complex process of estimating the values of different parameters, as well as the high dimensionality of the data, results in machine learning being an opaque process. Machine learning is often employed when humans are not able to find algorithmic representations of the problem. A standout example is how deep learning outperformed any handcrafted method for image recognition tasks. Deep neural networks accomplish the job in a way that humans cannot describe in logical terms. We can only understand it from a high-level perspective. Our limitations in understanding algorithms' rationale make it difficult to employ machine learning in situations where the consequences of possible failures are critical. As sustained by Shannon's mathematical theory of communication, results generated by any data processing method would be limited to the input provided. In other terms, any conclusion can be at most as reliable as the data it's based on. Biases in algorithmic decision-making are mainly due to three main aspects. Social aspects have an influence, for example, in human-tagged datasets. A technical aspect can be, for instance, a pseudo-random number generator, which inadvertently never shows up certain values. Emergent aspects come from advances in knowledge or changes to the system's users and stakeholders. Finally, a more subtle aspect is that algorithm's output also requires 
interpretation from the users, which might reflect their unconscious motivations, emotions, geographic influence, etc. Profiling algorithms are frequently associated with sources of discrimination. In computer systems, users are usually described by arrays of attributes. Profiling algorithms classify users on the basis of the similarity between these arrays of values. Classification aimed at predicting users' behavior is consequently made at group level, where individuals belonging to the same class are expected to act in a similar way. This kind of generalization brings to form of discrimination comparable to prejudices or anecdotal evidence. Attempts to avoid discrimination were made, for example, by excluding sensitive attributes, such as gender or ethnicity, from the profiling analysis. However, a common risk was the one of proxies, meaning attributes which were considered neutral, such as postal code, but still resulting in discriminative profiling due to some intrinsic biases in the data. Some of the strategies currently adopted in discrimination prevention are 1. A controlled distortion of the training dataset 2. The integration of anti-discrimination criteria into the profiling algorithm 3. Post-processing of profiling criteria 4. A random mutation of profiling decisions Transformative effects in individuals' autonomy concern drawing a separation line between supporting and controlling humans' decisions. A subject's decision-making is manipulated when his choices reflect third parties' interests above his own. Let's consider the case of personalization algorithms that filter information on the basis of users' preferences, behaviors, and perhaps vulnerabilities to influence. In principle, Personalization should improve decision-making by providing the users with only relevant information. However, deciding which information is relevant is highly subjective. Also, the consequent reduction of information diversity can be considered as a limitation of autonomy, where the spontaneous discovery of new things, ideas and options would appear as anomalies against profiled interests. Informational privacy regards the capacity to control the degree of freedom that third parties might have on the use of our personal information. Data mining is driving a transformation into this notion of data privacy. In European data protection law, personal data is defined as data identifying specific individuals. When data mining algorithms process and aggregate users' data, personal identity is lost and data become anonymous and considered ownerless. In other terms, data mining is allowed to use personal data with total freedom as long as those records identifying the property of the data were first removed. Algorithms transformed our perception of informational privacy creating the need for a new theory of privacy, responsive to the reduced importance of individuality. However, mechanisms to enforce privacy in analytics are needed to limit the access to identifiable records of information. Further work is also required to describe how privacy operates at group level. The European Union General Data Protection Regulation is indicative of the challenges to be globally faced in regulating algorithms. When a technology fails, blame and sanctions must be attributed. Following the traditional model of responsibility, since developers have had the total control on the behavior of algorithms, they were responsible for potential failures. However, with the advent of machine learning, nobody has enough control over the machine's actions to be able to assume the responsibility for them. Behavioral control is being gradually transferred from the programmer to the algorithm itself. As a consequence, some researchers sustain that decision-making machines 
should be considered autonomous agents with some degree of moral responsibility. Others sustain that the requirements for moral agency may differ between humans and algorithms, because moral responsibility requires intentionality, which is absent in algorithms. Besides the shift in blaming algorithms while making designers not responsible for the unethical behavior of their creations, there's the concept of distributed responsibility, where responsibility is shared across a network of human and algorithmic actors simultaneously. Beyond the nature of moral agency in machines, another aspect regards how to make autonomous algorithms able to make moral reasoning. Some researchers sustain that algorithms should be constrained by the same ethical principles followed by humans. Other approaches don't put the ethical principles at the basis of the decision-making logic. Indeed, they think that ethics can be modeled understanding how intuition, moral principles and logical reasoning interact with each other. In the end, moral standing in algorithms' decision-making remains an open question in machines' ethics. The undertaken discussion regarded different fields where algorithms are used, such as artificial intelligence, surveillance, computer systems, and human-machine interactions. However, a broader analysis of the work related to all these domains would have been prohibitive. Despite the limitations, the analysis allowed a rigorous diagnosis of the ethical challenges deriving from the use of algorithms, also laying the foundation for a principled organization of the ethical field. Algorithms ethics is not a mature field yet, but I'm personally confident that aided by the map shown here, future work will make explicit the many implicit connections to algorithms in ethics and beyond. I was born in a Christian family. You know the story of the apple, Adam and Eve? I have been taught that we, as humans, are imperfect by nature. But what is a proper definition of perfection? If we intend perfection as the absolute or deterministic outcome, well, simplistic theories might achieve perfection. Think about propositional logic, where every valid expression can be proved to be true or false in a finite time. However, as we move towards more realistic and powerful frameworks, such as when we introduce the concept of infinity, we lose completeness, we lose perfection. So introducing probability theory and statistics is the inevitable admission that perfection is just an asymptotic limit, which might be approximated, but only at infinity, or with infinite experience. In a similar way, traditional algorithms guarantee a deterministic behavior, but only working with simplified models of reality. However, decades of research didn't give any satisfactory results in tasks like image recognition or in the complex game of Go. Neural networks, on the other hand, are, are inspired by humans. They learn from data. We, we have a limited time on this planet to gain experience and acquire the skills we need to struggle with life. But AI has the power and the potential to collect the entire human knowledge and get always closer to this asymptotic limit of perfection. Training neural networks is in some way like training a dog. Sometimes they bite their owners. We are training autonomous entities. Within their limits and constraints, we have to leave them the freedom to make their own mistakes and eventually will be surprised by some Gaussian perturbation of standard behaviors. As math might suggest, there will always be an infinite distance between where we are and the actual infinity. Making our datasets always more complete and assuming the ethical issues as a reflection of ourselves 
and byproduct to learn from are the only way to reach superhuman performance.